Hi guys, my name is Victor Gundele and I welcome you again to one of my business valuation review uh, content. Uh, this time we are going straight into the financial sector and we will be using this bank as an example, uh, Zenith Bank of Nigeria, as, as a Nigerian bank. Uh, please note that this is only for learning purposes and uh, no decision should be made uh, based on these facts. Uh, because of that, I decided not to use the, the latest uh, financial release by the by the company. So it's more like we are, we are just putting pulling the valuation period backward. So please, only for learning uh, purposes only. Uh, let's get started. Uh, but before we we look through the financials, let's first discuss the operation of a typical banks. I know most people usually struggle with uh, understanding how bank operates. So now, the first thing we, that you need to understand is banks deal with cash. In fact, everything about bank is cash itself. Now, usually start with a deposit where I have to take my money, you have to take your own money. We take it straight to the bank. The bank will collect it and save it for us. Now, because cash is king, uh, money you cannot just store money without using it for anything. So which means the cash must be used for something. And one of its usefulness, by the time we, we, you and I were taking our money to the bank, the bank will now convert that money and start using it. So the first major means of that money, right, because it's just, it's just to also help with the circulation of cash, the money you are not using, maybe you don't need it currently, you take it to the bank, bank can use it to also improve other aspects of business operations and one of it is giving out loan and advances to both customers, uh, other banks, individual, uh, established organization. Now, there are times where uh, you really want to give out more loans, you want to use more cash, you want to distribute more cash, and the deposit you have at times might not be enough, even maybe in a particular, maybe that particular period, um, and that, that could be due to maybe you've given out so much loans, right, then you see a, a more opportunity to also give out loan in order to even make more, then they now tend to source from other sources, which include borrowings, and also all other lending facility and liabilities. Yeah, there are times where equity even comes into play, but most times uh, they are liability centric, right? So which means the money you and I will take to the bank, right? They can also then tend to borrow from other sources if they need and other uh, kind of liability. So majorly to give out loans and advances, that's the major core operation of a bank. But at times they have so much cash so much deposit that they cannot just leave like that because your know, time value of money is very important and you can't just leave cash uh, idle. So as such, you see where you look at the balance sheet, then you see that you know some of the deposits because they have in excess, some stayed as 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 a cash right that can be withdrawn at at any time. Also, there are uh, regulatory around uh, expected cash reserve to be with the central. The central bank of, of, of your of your entity, of your country, and uh, then they put some into investment security, right? Or then another also treasury bills. So in nutshells, in nutshell, if you take a look at this, they are liability centric. That means it is the liability that drives the business operations. And it is that liabilities that they convert into assets in order to make revenue. Now, when you want to build Mode, financial model for a bank, either a startup bank or existing banks, like the one we are using now, a public banks, you always need to start with your balance sheet because they are balance sheet driven. Not only balance sheet, you always need to start from the liabilities. So we are going to take a look at Zenith Bank and see how this, uh, how, how, how it works, right? So it starts with deposits driven by loan and advances. So which means those are the core thing that you need. That is the core driver of the business. Deposit, they convert it into loan and advances. They put some into investment security, bonds, and other bills. You have to put some cash as a reserve. 
uh, in the bank, with the central bank, like that, mainly availability of cash for any withdrawal, then they can source funds from other borrowings and other liabilities. Now, which means this balance sheet, this guy, is the one that feeds into the income statement. Now, as against our normal manufacturing, a kind of approach where you build your income statement before you go to the balance sheet, when you are dealing with bank, no. You build out your balance sheet first, because every other thing in the balance sheet depends on this. Every other, everything in income statement depends on the balance sheet. So in the balance sheet, that's where you see your interest income, which is the element of that what? Of the loan and advances they give out. Out of the interest income, maybe they generate from the uh, investment security, the bonds, investments. Then interest expense. So that's deposit, the money you and I will take it to the bank. Uh, they will need to be paying us if you don't withdraw the money within a given period. So each bank, they also maintain their own different uh, uh, interest on, de on deposit, so which becomes an interest expense to them. Because that's, that's so basically they are just encouraging, hey, bring your money as a deposit, and this is what you get if you leave the money for this certain period. Then training gains from others' investment security, you have fees and commissions that are related to uh, fees income, uh, fees expense, you have them. Then you have your operating expenses. Those are the cost of running the business as a whole. Then you have your profits. So most times, uh, when we are building a typical model, especially evaluation for a bank, um, most times we, we don't usually focus on cash flow statements because they, they are more, everything in their balance sheet is even cash itself, right? And uh, because that's, that's what most people usually struggle with. So um, you, don't, you might not need to, to just stress yourself trying to do cash flow because everything in the, bank, in the balance sheet itself is, they are, they are all cash, right? So uh, it might be difficult for you to get the cash flow. Yes, I've built a model where I just had to build the cash flow for the bank, but it's really not necessary. It's not that necessary. It's not that necessary. So now let's go back to the Zenith Bank, at least with the understanding of what we said. And let's, let's start with the balance sheet. Now, if I come to the balance sheet, let's, let's take a look at the liabilities first. Now, liability side, you can see that customer deposits accounts for, so let, let, let's, let, me, let me look at this. So uh, the deposits and liability divided by the total liability. So if I check that over the year, you see that those customer deposits alone accounts for Almost 78.2% within, within the last five years. Okay, we have four years here, right? And even if you just look at the values, if my total liability is uh, this, I think this everything here is in million, so this, this should be around trillion or something, right? And you can see what, you can see the customer deposit figures, which is, which is extremely what high. And that is, that is to tell you that this is the major driver of the business just the way you want to do for manufacturing firm uh, every you you can you can you can set everything as a, a driver to your revenue because that's like the umbrella but for the banks that customer deposit is like the main umbrella and that's why you see they just want to acquire more customers they want to acquire more organization that can save their that can keep the money with them like that because that's the major uh, driver and now say so if you look at this customer deposit which is the main driver, and look at other liabilities, uh, other lending facility and borrowings. So you can see that those, these other three guys, that's also other sources of them getting cash to fund the business. Okay, and if you look at the assets, so now let, let's look at, as I said, it's majorly being funded by liabilities. So if you look at, if you take a look at the, the total liabilities to the total equity, Right? If you take a look at that, so let me put it in percent, you will see that the liability is even 86.8% of the total asset. Now, that total asset, we still need to do some few, we need to remove certain line items, for example, uh, all these other deferred tax, other assets, property, plant, and equipment, intangible assets, we're supposed to even remove them and see that and see what percent, the f maybe, we should, maybe we should do that, so let me do some. So I'll just sum everything up from cash cash down to investment security. Investment security, all right? Uh -huh. So, so let, let me now, let me do, do that formula again. So total liability divided by the summation of all those line items. And you can see that liabilities is funding average of 
90.7%. You can see how tiny their equity is. Right? That's a discussion for, 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 for another day. Okay? So that means this, they are majorly fund, they are balance sheet centric. Right? So number one, you need to look at the customer deposit, what is driving it. Right? Do we expect it? How do we expect it to grow? Uh, because as I said, every other line item can be set as a driver to that customer deposit because that is what is driving the business. So try, you look at it, customer, how, how do you expect them to grow? Have they been growing historically? Then once you have that, that's when you can now start going to, hey, my loans and advances. What percent of their deposits are they giving out in form of loan? There are also some uh, legal uh, regulatory requirement that always tell them that, hey, you know what, you need to be able to give out a minimum of this particular percent of any deposit that you have, right? This means they're encouraging them to release funds into the economy. Now, other drivers also drive this loan um, advances, uh, uh, interest rates, right? If interest is too high, people then decide not to borrow. So, so, so dif different, different thing, and that's why most time they also try to diversify their own uh, business operation because this is what drive the business profitability. Okay, so with the understanding of that, if you also now come to income statements, you look at the income statements. So, interest and similar income, interest income, which is uh, majorly what majorly what they get from this loan they give us, so loan to loan and advances due from other banks. Uh, treasury bills, right? In fact, I think while we were doing that total asset, we, this asset pledge as collateral, I'm supposed to even remove it from there, right? Because people they've given no to, then they have to pledge assets for collateral, right? So I think that we're supposed to remove that to also give us the true, the true picture, the true picture. So interest income, so interest expense, right? So the money, as I said, all the deposits, the money you take to the bank, they need to pay you interest expense on it. Uh, please, uh, we are not talking about <laughs> people that <laughs> that's <laughs> that save their money today and take it tomorrow <laughs> or take it next week, <laughs> right? So interest expense, uh, the, the, so you, you see that. So they also make uh, impairment charge. So this is based on standard saying uh, you, you definitely when you give out loans to people, uh, you tend not to get some back, so uh, uh, provision for losses. So there are lo so many, many things, but I'll just keep it short so you can also learn more, read more. On your on your home, so fees and commission, you can see that. So net income from fees and and commission, you know, those message they sent they sent to you, the services, cost of them helping you to keep your money, sending you email here and there, comes under that. So trading gain, uh, or any other operating income related, so depreciation, amortization, personal expenses, and operating uh, expenses. So their, their financials, if you really under understand banks, it's, it's just quite straightforward, and I, I even think. For you to be a very sound uh, analyst, right, you need to understand business operations. Trust me, how banks operate. Okay, so now, in line with this, um, and one thing I love about Zenith, um, what is expected because they are mature firm, uh, they kind of have a, a, a steady growth, making it easy to even predict, uh, to, 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 up, to use historical average in predicting uh, the future. And, and, and that's... that's uh, that's one way we measure how risky a business can be, right? So for a business that, at least look at them, if it's not startup, I'm talking about a mature firm that is publicly traded, right? You look at what's the average, and you see that the trend is predict is predictive. Then uh, that, that, that'd be the level of uh, certainty and confi uh, confidence to, to investors, okay? So now, as I said, we always start with, so here, uh, this is the input section. So did separate worksheet for balance sheet. I also did another separate one for income statement. But the first thing I did was to do the balance sheet first, right? Then someone might be asking, okay, we didn't put cash flow as a set. Uh, most times it's really not necessary. There's a built model where I just had to also include the cash flow. But it most times is because everything in the balance sheet is cash itself. Now someone will be like, well, how come it balances, right? <laughs> it's, it's always balanced. So, so we, we, we have this, this interesting uh, a um, borrowing check that we usually that we usually use. Okay, so I started with the customer deposit, <coughs> the ending balance. Now, because it is a balance sheet line item, and you know, uh, based on our financial analysis, whenever you are d using any line item of balance sheets for computation, um, it's always good you use average of previous period and current period to 
adjust for timing differences because uh, maybe the money even came in a day before the last period in the year or came in the beginning of the year or middle of the year or so just to make um, adjustments for that. So if you take a look at the average, uh, the, 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 as I said, it's really a very, very good uh, companies. Uh, they, they are historic, they are, they, they've really been growing uh, positively. Now, uh, I, yes, I feel I'm, I'm, I was just conservative with the expected <laughs> year growth. But however, um, you know, um, it's valuation. So uh, I, could I could use this to create different scenario that, okay, you know what, what if I'm taking the average of these last three years, right? Because if they've done so much like this, uh, now look at what the value. So let me let me even say, assuming I'm using the average across, I feel this is this is way too high, right? Yeah, might be realistic, right? But do I feel comfortable with this? The answer is no. So it's based on my own how comfortable I feel. Uh, even incorporated uh, forecast inflation rate, and I even say that say the historical growth is even higher than the forecast uh, inflation rate. So as I said. Uh, the boys, the ball is your court. This is only for learning purposes. But always remember, you really need to defend <laughs> anything you put in your in your in your model. So I think I feel comfortable with this. Yes, even though from 2019 to 2020, you can yeah, they they they, they double their deposits, right? Even if you take a let me take a look at the what's what's the what is the company annual growth rate? So equal to IRR. Right, I think that's fine. Is it RRI? Okay, no, I got to RRI. Okay, that's the formula for compound and aggregate. So, one, two, three. So, three period, the present value will be the deposit in 2019 and the one in 2022. So, what am I getting? So, that's giving me around 28.2. So, you see, I'm very, very conservative with, 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 with what I've used, right? But yes, leave me alone. <laughs> I think I feel comfortable with it. Yeah, by the time you are doing your home. Just, 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 just use that. So, so one thing about being a, a, a valuation analyst is, I don't know, you just, you just have this, uh, this urge to always cut something, <laughs> to always stay conservative. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. So from there, uh, also take a look at what the uh, loan they've been giving out. What, what's that percent to, to the loans? And you can see this. Uh, so the, the deposits average. So everyone use the average to, and check that to. So the, the gross loan to customers, so also they usually make provision for expected credit loss in getting the net loan and advances to, to, to customers. So this is what I, so I feel the, the net loan uh, trend seems realistic, right? Even though, we have, as, as I said, uh, my valuation date is December 2022. So as on today is December 2022. So I can only uh, make judgments based on today, right, so on, as, which is, December 2022, as I said, as long today is December 2022, right, 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 right. Okay, so I feel this is fine. Uh, yeah, uh, inflation is increasing. Um, government tends to also increase interest rates to be able to call that. Um, just the different, different story which might limit people to borrow more and, and banks also trying to make sure they secure their, their, themselves by not giving too much out as well. However, uh, I think I've taken the average of loan as a percent of average deposit and are comfortable with that going forward. All right. So they are expected credit loss as well. Uh, 4.8 in 2020, 4.2 in 2021, then reduced significantly. Uh, that, 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 that shows a very good recovery rate. But however, uh, I've used the average of that last two or three years so, or so. So when you are building your own, you can go up your historical can go back as far as, as you want. But as I said, most time, the last two, three years is, is, is enough, right, to show the trend. So now, due from other banks, uh, it seems it decreased significantly in 2021, but increased almost times two in 2022. Uh, so uh, what, do, what do we think about that? So I just have to use that average as, as it is. Or maybe I should have even used the media. But, but that's fine. I feel, I feel comfortable with that. So cash with, with banks, right, cash balances, cash and balances with central banks. So what I've done is uh, I've used this also as a percent of what? As a percent of, as a percent of deposit. As I said, deposit is like the driver, just the same way we do uh, something as percent of revenue in our, in our uh, normal manufacturing frame. Treasury bills, I uh, just incorporate year on year growth. Uh, most times this, this might really not be 100% predictable, but it seems they've maintained a good trend historically. So investment security, I've also 
adopted the same year on year uh, growth as well. It might be hard to to as to say this is what's really driving this, right? I know yeah, some people might be like, well, we can still use that as a percent of 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 deposit and stuff like that. Well, uh, the, the ball is in your court, and you should just be able to defend what you've done and why you've done it. So, derivative assets, assets pledge as collateral. So, right. So, I think. Yeah, so asset play as collateral. So I also use this as a percent of the loan that has been given out. I think the, the naming this the driver is uh, as so percent percent of percent of of loan and advances. Yeah. So that's the that's the main driver. So deferred tax, I've also said that as a percent of uh, profit before tax. Then the property plant and equipment, we just did a proper uh, PPE schedule, uh, like a walk back. And that is what we have. So also use it as percent of revenue. So you can also calculate your total revenue. So they usually have total revenue. When we get to income statements, you see how that is being computed. So same thing in tangible assets then derivative liabilities. So which is also a driver of um, uses as percent of derivative assets. So current uh, income tax payable. So uh, as I said, you can have a different view. As I said, this is only for learning purposes. So that by the time you are doing your own, you serve as a guide. I uh, always remember that there are always more than one or two ways of getting things done, especially when it comes to financial modeling. So other liabilities, just maintain that year-on-year -year growth. Uh, on uh, Other lending facilities, uh, observe that has been growing, right, but use that as a percent of average loans. Okay, so um, that's what we did here. So percent of, okay, percent of loans, right, so other lending facilities. So... Uh, debt securities, they had none. Then for the share premium, uh, share premium, this is what we have, uh, share capital, and then share premium. So now, I made this provision down here, and uh, one of the reasons why I did this is because of the current uh, recapitalization that is going on. So, but for now, um, so which means they expect to have a certain amount, right, and government is saying they should raise it over the next two years. But if I'm, as of December 2022, definitely they don't, they did not know that that might occur. So for now, in my analysis, I've left that out because my valuation date is 31st December 2022. But as I said, hopefully, if I want to update this model going forward, I can just incorporate this and see how that will affect the business valuation. Retain earnings are computed. Uh, other reserves, then non-controlling uh, interest. So that's all about the balance sheet as I'm building it. I'm also linking it directly to my balance sheet now. After I've completed my balance sheet, then I'll now go ahead with my interest, with my income statement. So, for example, interest income, you have interest income on loans that has been given out. So, historically, this is their interest income to loans, right? So, historically, the interest income they've recognized in the income statements have measured to the average loans that they, that they have. Then, just incorporate the, I think that should be the average, the average of it going forward. Then treasury, treasury income. So also look at what the treasury income in the income statements as compared to the balance sheet. Historically, there was the forecast. The same thing for note bonds and commercial paper. So interest expense, we just compute that on uh, using deposits as, as a driver. So impairment as well, also take a look at that. So impairment are uh, to financial and non-financial financial, financial instruments. So net income or fees and commission. So use both. Uh, loans and deposits from banks, the f which is fees income, then fees and commission, which which is on uh, deposits. Then trading, uh, as well, recognize the income there. Then other operating income, uh, which is really not predictable. So just use the last historical value. Then personal expenses, look at the historical. What do we expect them to maintain? Then also operating expenses was the historical percent to total revenue. Yeah, so you can also calculate the total revenue from there, uh, which we are going to see. Then the interest, the income, income tax expense. This is what they write in the historical. We have decided to adopt 32.5%. So as I said, that was as at 31st December 2022. Yeah, I know the tax rate has increased, but I'm still maintaining that position of 2022. So now, this is the balance sheet. So uh, because of the average that we use, right, uh, and the, which means there's no way you build a bank, financial financial model for a bank that you will not have circularity, right? Because number one, as I said, 
Odeline balance sheet driven. Uh, most times we use average of period year and current year. Then every other line item is a driver. Uh, instead as a driver to um, mostly loans and, and, and deposits. So uh, this is the historical wise. And if you look at the trend, uh, I think I feel comfortable with this. Let's start from the cash, right? Looking at the historical, this is what we expect them to maintain. Treasury bill, all right? I feel comfortable with that as well. Derivative assets, the same thing. Then loans and borrowing. Uh, so I think in 2020, 2019 and to 2022, they kind of double that. So going forward uh, from 2023 to 2027, it's actually not being doubled. But the, even though they can still repeat what they did in the last four years, but I think I, I, I feel comfortable with this. And as I said, because of the increasing inflation, government might decide to also increase interest rates, which might affect them. Drop, right? So due from other banks, uh, banks might decide to do more other tr transactions within themselves, so which might give them uh, more benefits. Okay, so assets pledged as collateral, investment security, we also expect that to keep increasing. So 2019, 591, which I think they also even part they triple that that one. So which I feel that that is reasonable and is expected. So other assets, party plant and equipment, intangible. So customer deposit, right? So that also doubled between 2019 and 2022. So going forward, I feel this is still this is still fair and, and the growth is, is steady. Okay, so other borrowings, other borrowings, other borrowings. So these other borrowings, as I said, uh, most time we decide not to do the, we decide not to create the cash flow. Then you can use this other, this other method, which is what, which, which is what I've, I've used here. So whereas we are saying if something is something, then the remaining, uh, the remaining funds needed would like we might be sorted from, from other other sources. So I'm going to show you that below. So share capital, we, meant to, we hope they will maintain the same thing. But as I said, because of what is happening in current period in 2024, right, uh, capitalization, bringing in more share premium, which would definitely impact this share capital and share premium. But as I said, I maintain a position uh, that today is this first, 31st December 2022. So that information does not exist. So it's better I keep it clean like this. Retain earnings, that is increasing, and also other reserve as well, because those are more like regulatory and related things. Uh, Right, so for the, as I said, yeah, I decided not to do the cash flow because everything balance sheet is cash flow. So this is the approach where we use the total asset, uh, except period from, so we use one particular line item. So I think for this one, under the assets, uh, we just use this, we use other assets, right? So this should be fair period except from, uh, from other assets, from other assets. So that's for the balance, that's for the assets side, then travel, uh, the liabilities, right? So we sum everything up, uh, so except for the prior borrowing. So uh, the difference that we have will always be added to the particular line item. So if it is, uh, if it is positive, that means they need to raise more funding through the uh, borrowings. And if it is negative, that means uh, that will be coming from, that will, uh, would go straight to the total assets. So and just so for you to, to move on. You don't need to waste much of your time. So we calculate the average interest earnings. Uh, most times, all these line items can be difficult to calculate uh, because the way the management kind of do their uh, classification, you might not be, you might not get the accurate thing. So uh, what we've done is we've gone to the historical, look at what the net interest margin has been historically, and we use that in getting our average interest uh, earning assets. Right, and we use the average going forward. So the same thing for interest bearing liabilities. So most times, if you want to try and calculate this, uh, it might, can be difficult. And you don't want to waste your time uh, doing that. So if you want, if you have the ratios in their uh, historical financials, just use that, uh, right, using the formula and to do a work back to get the actual value. So the same thing for non-performing loans. Uh, this is what we've done. But yes, if you want to go granular, you can go. But the truth is. The more granular you go, the more you uh, might likely get stopped. All right? So that's for the balance sheet. So the same thing for the uh, uh, income statements. So income statements, uh, right? So uh, interest income, uh, this is what we have. Uh, do I feel they might be able to achieve this? In fact, I feel they might be able to, they might achieve more than that because as that today, which is 2024, uh, there are 2023 financials that they release was almost times two of 
this FY of the revenue of the interest income they made in 2022. <laughs> right. So as I said, I'm assuming I where I'm standing is December 2022. So even though as I said 2023, they even achieve uh, almost times two of what they had here. But uh, this I feel comfortable with that, uh, and every other thing that has been computed in the calculation workbook and giving us a profit for the year and. The profit for the year, as I said, I, I kind of feel comfortable with the profit for the year. Because if you look at what they've had historically, it seems they, they've really been maintaining uh, a, a good range. And going forward, even every other thing being equal, I still feel they will be able to maintain that. So these are more like the applicable uh, uh, KPI, right, that we've considered uh, in our calculation, in our computation, right? So return on average equity historically. Um, Going forward, this is what we we have, right? As I said, I think I'm I'm really being too conservative because this return on average equity does not mirror <laughs> what they've had. But well, somehow, somehow, I feel comfortable. Return on average assets, the same thing. So uh, I think this my being conservative is is, is, is not is too much. <laughs> All right. So net interest uh, margin, I, I think that is fine. Profit before tax also kind of mirror what they had historically. In fact, lower than what they had in historical, which I think is good. Uh, net income margin, even lower than what they've had. In fact, I think I slashed that by two. That's 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 too bad. That's that's not fair on me. But <laughs> as I said, just only for learning purposes. So cost of funds, the same thing. Uh, cost to income ratios. Also look at that. I think this even that cost to income ratio. You can see that is is way higher than what they've had historically. But uh, 2022 seems to, to to jump slightly. Okay, so loan to deposits. I also believe they might want to continue that. Uh, so, okay, I don't know. I'm not sure why this loan to deposit is increasing significantly. <laughs> I'm saying they will keep giving out more loans. But I said, please remember, many purposes only. So uh, the non-performing loan, the, the capital adequacy ratio, what we expect them to have going forward now for the valuation uh valuing uh, bank valuation so i'm also using a, a dcf approach now it's quite different from the normal way we do our uh, valuation for a typical manufacturing firm uh, so here they don't usually start with net income so you have your profit before tax consider your tax expense then you have your net income so the main key driver is this adjustment for regulatory uh, capital so it could either be negative could either be positive now that's where the headache of doing valuation for a bank comes into play. So first, let's go to our uh, compound annual. Okay, before we go that, under our revenue, I think we have. Okay, so I did a breakdown here. So yeah, so this is always good for you. So total revenue. So we calculated the total revenue, and these are the elements that we've considered under total revenue: interest, similar income, uh, which you can see down here. So interest from uh, loan and advances, interest income from treasury bill, from notes and uh, bond and commercial paper. So interest, total income on fees, and other income, then trade again, add that together. That makes up their total revenue. Then for the total cost, every other line item. So interest income, impairment, fees, commission, personal expenses, operating expenses, you sum that up, except, so, except for depreciation and amortization. Then if you had depreciation and amortization together, this is what you, this is what you get. This is what you get, okay? And below, it's also easy for you to do this. Check the operating expenses and also get their operating income, which is the same thing as the operating operating profit. So you just sum uh, those line items together to give you your operating income. So all this, as I said, most times self-learning is always good, but yeah, try and see how it's being done. So for our DCF, as I said, the main driver is always the adjustments for regulatory uh, capital. So this is a worksheet called CAR, and we look at the risk weighted. Uh, capital uh, adequacy. So one, uh, we have, this has been slit, they are funding, which is the first thing that you need to get, the regulatory capital. So uh, there's always a regulatory uh, time that needs to be adopted by all banks. So here, let me see. Okay, yeah, so, so this is the one from the so Nigeria. If you go to Central Bank, you always see guidance notes on regulatory capital. So you can read through this, what makes up tier one, what makes up tier two. Right, so things you can, the adjustments you can do, um, that is deduction from the capital, uh, from the capital. So, so this this is a full 
uh, I think CBN did justice to this, so they make that provision, their formulas, what you need to do. So what comes on that tier one, right? Uh, tier one, paid up share capital, they maybe prefer share share premium, uh, reserve, general reserve, uh, SME reserve, statutory reserve. So if you also go to the notes of the account, you see this in the bank uh, financial statement. So what makes up tier two uh, uh, as well, so that by the time you are building your model uh, valuation, you, it's easy for you to incorporate that into it. So now, so we have share premium, the same thing, so we, from the historical, and then we use that to do the forecast for the future. So adjustments, deferred tax, intangible, then other. Now, tier two, uh, um, this is what we have. Now, most time it can be difficult for you to break down this their tier capital, right? So most times what we just do is, uh, we just look at what the contribution of each of these to the uh, total regulatory uh, requirements. Uh, so you just you just move on. You really don't want to waste uh, much time. You really don't want to waste much time trying to crack this down. But if you are bidding for a, uh, for, for a startup or uh, where you have access to management uh, details, yes, you might definitely need to break to break to break this down, right? So first one you, ca you calculate is the uh, total regulatory uh, capital, which is tier one plus tier two capital. You do that, then you go ahead and compute your risk weighted assets, right? So. Um, they usually divide it into credit risk, market risk, and operational risk assets. Now, most times, if you are trying to break it down from the historical financials, it can be difficult. You might not be accurate. So as such, look at what, so, 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 for, so we just got this from the historical, and this is what the total risk weighted assets is, and we've also computed that risk weighted uh, capital adequacy ratio, so which is your, your total regulatory capital divided by what? By the uh, risk-weighted assets, right? So for the risk-weighted assets, if you are building a model where you have to break everything down, uh, so CBN also had another one, so liquidity and capital adequacy uh, ratio computation, so which shows the component of liquidity ratio computation, the one on the asset, then how do you get to assign uh, weight, uh, the, the risk, the weight of risk? Right, so they, they provide the full details uh, around it. So uh, this is something you can also get from uh, CBN uh, website. So tier one, first tier capital, second tier capital, and how you, how you do that, that computation in your model. So here, this is what we have. So uh, historically, the maintain 21.4, uh, that is the risk weighted capital adequacy ratio. Now, 2022, this, there's a slight uh, decrease, right? But, uh, I think normally I should have considered average of the last three years, but I've also included it by the way. So 21.4, and I feel they might maintain that uh, going forward. So tier one to risk weighted assets, tier two to risk weighted assets, total uh, capital to risk weighted assets, right? Then the risk weighted assets to to our total assets in the in the bal in the balance sheets. So however, uh, this seems to 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 fall below. What they write historically, right? But as I said, please, this is only for learning uh, purposes, right? So once you completed your regulatory capital, the risk weighted assets, uh, then you now go ahead and do the estimation of your uh, qualifying capital. So you have your total qualifying capital, right? So which is the uh, the total regulatory capital? Then what's the risk weighted assets which you've completed up there? Then that gives you your uh, your capital adequacy ratios, right? Then look at the total assets so what's the total assets and what is the risk weighted assets uh percent percent of it right so this is what we and now that now gives you room to now do your uh, computation for, for your uh, required investment in equity right right so for example you look at what this is what we are saying they have in this do we have the total qualifying capital that they will need in this period is one four two Six, right so um, which means this what they have currently is is higher than what they had previous period that means uh, something needs to fund this guy the next period what they have is also higher than what they had previous period so that means something needs to fund fund this just 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 like that but now in doing that in getting that uh, we, we've taken a look at so you can have different scenario here where we consider what has been the average historical uh, uh, capital adequacy ratio, what's the minimum, what's the median, 
then what's the regula what's regulatory minimum required? So regulatory is even saying 15%. But however, you can see that historically, uh, they've maintained a CAR that is uh, higher than that. So for that, I've just decided to use the uh, average, to use the median, to use the median, so which is uh, so which is what we've done here. So the risk weighted asset, so multiply by the, so this is just looking at the scenario for us to get. This is what, this is what the adjusted capital uh, qualifying capital requirement, regulatory requirement is. So which means if you take a look at this, compare the current period total capital they need, uh, compare it to previous period, that means they need additional funds to be able to meet up that capital uh, adequacy uh, ratio that we've, we, we, we've computed. And this is what now flows straight into our uh, DCF as in form of the adjustment for capital uh, regulation. So this is what we have there. Then we go ahead, so, so that makes up our net cash flow available, right? So which means they're making this net income because they need to get this up uh, to meet up the regulatory requirement. That means we're deducting this from the net uh, income. As I said, everything in their financial statement is cash. Okay, so now we calculate, the, we compute the terminal value using our uh, long-term inflation uh, for cash rates to get the total cash flow available. So use the discounts, uh, and in computing the discounts, we, we had computed our cost of equity. So in the risk free rates, as at December 2020, which is our valuation date, we have equity premium, uh, better leverage. So um, we source this data from uh, Damodaran uh, data as well. So a big thanks to, to him. So uh, I think we, we adopted the we adopted the bank's uh, regional uh, a better, better, right? Not the unlevered better. Okay, then uh, we've not made adjustment for size premium and specific premium considering they are public traded uh, company. Okay, and with that, we discounted the cash to get, we discounted that the total cash flow available to get our present value of our cash flow. And summing that up, that makes up our. Sorry about that. So then this makes up our equity value. So we sum everything up, and that makes up our equity value. This is their shares uh, in issue, uh, our standing shares that period at uh, December 2022. And then we divide that to get our share price of 25.8. And uh, look at, so I look at the, what the implied multiple is. So this is the average historical earnings uh, over the last four years. Then this is their book value as at 31st December, and that gives us an uh, implied price to earning of 3.57x uh, times, right, within 20, 2019 to 2020, why the implied book value was 0.59. So I took a step further uh, to look at what is obtainable, what was uh, the valuation as at that 31st December. So on CAP IQ, uh, 784,900, which is slightly higher, just slight higher than my own, right? And their share price was at 25 Naira, where, while my own model is saying 25.8 as well, then uh, arrive at a price book value. So from Cap IQ, their price book value as at December 2022 was 0.57X, so which is like just 0.02 uh, higher than, than, than my own. So this is how we uh, typically compute our uh, valuation when we are dealing with uh, a, a bank, right, this year approach. So there are also market approach where we do different adjustments, but at uh, this session, I've just decided to focus on on the uh, this year. So now, uh, as I said, this adjusted qualifying, it really had significant impact on that valuation. Now, look out what I have up here. So up here, uh, what I've done is I've linked the valuation report here. So let me put this, this is, let me, okay, so that we can see it very well. So let me just put it in one. Okay, so let me put it white and maybe look at, okay, right, so this that I have up here, so equity value, share price. So if I decide to go with the average historical, if I change this to one, to drive the compound, the, the capital adequacy ratio, if I use the historical uh, average, uh, I'm getting 25.1 Naira per share, which is still higher than what was obtainable that period. So basically, I think that is telling me that as of that period, the company was, uh, undervalued, right? So, it, which means I can go ahead and buy the share. I think today, today, right? As at today, uh, the, the share price has almost doubled or something, right? Small. That's by the way. So, if I decide to use minimum, 
Uh, so minimum is even giving me 73.4. Wow, that's, 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 that's much. Then if I go with the median, median is giving me 25.8. If I go to, with the regulatory requirements, uh, it's giving me almost 218 uh, Naira per, per share. So I think uh, I've decided to go with the, with the third one, which is the median or average, either, either of the two. I think I, I went with the third one. Right, right. So if, if I also go online now, so today, so today is, uh, so today is 2024, right? So if I take a look at uh, Zenit uh, Bank, uh, Nigerian share price uh, as, at, as at today. So today is, uh, this, uh, today is April 2024. So look at what their share price is saying. But most times I usually prefer to to source them from a reliable uh, data source so that uh, we are we are very sure of, of what we are getting. But uh, by the way, so uh, this is so please remember this is just for learning uh, purposes only, and this is how we compute our DCL whenever we are valuing a banks. Right. So uh, bye for now, and we'll see you in our subsequent uh, session.